Finra tripped over their own uh, their own pole here and basically basically said like a we're incompetent and negligent we just made a goof on this ticker oops uh, B accidentally admitted or maybe purposely admitted that they uh, that all the shorts transferred to Nextbridge which was not supposed to be the case because if there are naked shorts, they cannot be in next bridge because the violation of reg show because reg show requires if you're going to sell naked you must identify obtainable shares and since there is no market there cannot be those shorts um oopsie <clears throat> then we have uh okay future millionaire houston i'm currently looking at my 1099 from fidelity and it looks like they're classifying my mmtlp shares as a realized gain how is this possible when they currently have zero value in my account this is the crap that they were showing. This was the original, if you looked at your tax status on in your account, you know, a month ago, your tax status would read gains. And then everyone screamed and yelled at them and they changed it to losses, but they kept the dates the same. And now it looks like on everyone's 1099, they put it back as gains. So I don't know exactly how to correct this, but someone said you can correct it. And if you get challenged by the IRS, you just explain what happened. But you can do the math yourself and report differently than what's on your 1099. I'm not a tax lawyer. I'm not an accountant. I would look up this and talk to someone who actually knows what I'm talking about. But but that is something I read. And do not take my word for it at all because I am not an expert in this. But uh, uh, when I do my taxes, I will probably correct it and make a note saying, hey, this is not a gain. This is a loss. Or I have not finished this deal anyway. So it should not, it should be considered long term capital gains that I'm holding. Old Lady in Training. That's a good name. Uh, now that FINRA has acknowledged shorts and Nextbridge, don't they have to tell Nextbridge who's short and how much? How else will they know who to bill for the payment in lieu? Uh, I'm not sure that's how the payment in lieu works. I think generally, you distribute your uh, dividend to your transfer agent. The transfer agent pays out whoever's registered with them, then sends it to the DTC. The DTC spreads it to the uh, uh, brokers. The brokers send those to shareholders, and then those that have the payment lose, uh, the brokers pull that money from the people who broker with them who have short positions and then send that out. Uh, but I would like any other reason to know who's short. I think, I think, I think personally that we need a law that states that to announce when someone makes a short position, you have to announce it. I don't care if you are like Bob Rando at his computer at home in Topeka, Kansas, you make a short position, the world knows about it. That's the way it should be. Flight Guy 99, why would FINRA admit to shorts being uh, transferred to Nextbridge if it's illegal? Is there a loophole we don't know, or is there a plan to blame broker-dealers? I think their plan is to blame broker-dealers. Even though the broker-dealers are basically saying, like, hey, we're going to go to position close only, and we even have some evidence floating around, I'm not sure how authentic it is, that, you know, groups like TD were saying, uh, we're sending out notices to those who had short positions saying, hey, we're going to close your short positions in the next two days. You have until 2 p.m. on Monday the 12th to close out or cover your position or we're going to do it for you. Um, that seems to be what was going to happen. My beef is that a lot of those short positions were naked short positions. And we know naked shorting is illegal. Even though there's loopholes, it's still legal. And the biggest loophole is identifying uh, uh, shares you can purchase, right? But if there is no market, you cannot identify shares that can be purchased. Therefore, you cannot have a naked short position at all in the private company because there's no market. You cannot be like, hey, Joe Blow over there has got 100 million shares that are available. He does not because there's no market. There's no way to purchase any of those shares to uh, cover your position. So... That's the biggest that's the biggest problem with the whole letting them just be like, well, if they were short MMTOP, they're now short in Nextbridge. Well, Nextbridge is a private company. You can't be short on them. Um, 
the Finn really meant to short shares to put broker dealers in boiling water like lobsters. Oh yeah. Finner will never take responsibility. Here's the thing is that, is that it was Finner's job in their corporate action to tell the broker dealers what to do. And they half heartedly did it. And then they pulled back and went, ah, uh. so in the end it's, it's up to, it was them. It was, they were the ones who were supposed to tell the broker dealers what to do. And now they're blaming the broker dealers. I was explaining this to somebody the other day, like, like part of FINRA's argument is they only deal with stocks that get traded. They can't regulate anything else. Therefore, since the stock isn't traded anymore, it's not their problem. Uh, it'd be like spilling a glass of water and then saying that you're only responsible for the water if it's inside the glass. But since it's spilled everywhere, it's no longer your bag. That's kind of the thinner argument is like they spilled the water, but now the water spilled. Oops. Somebody else has to clean this up because I know cleany cleany. And that's, uh, that seems to be their entire legal argument. Quite quest. Berta said he hopes we will get next bridge shares and cash. That's as good. Uh, why not? <laughs> why not both? Right? Yay. Okay. Shane Hanlon was on the phone with Quest Trade. It said FINRA is not blaming them for me and for me to contact Nextbridge. Back to square one. <laughs> he really wanted me to register my shares through AST though. Yeah, I mean, that's that's their game. Well, you should call AST. AST says, call DTC. DTC says, call FINRA. You call FINRA. FINRA says, call your broker. Your broker says, call AST. And you're just going to do that like Indy 500. And she's still looking at it, isn't she? Look at her just sitting there staring at the bag of goodness that sits on the shelf above my shoulder. She yells, she does, and just look at it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's you. That's you, you silly little dog. Just staring and staring and staring. Yeah. It's the same exact treats they have at the uh, ticket booth at the ferry, ferry. They have the exact same beef jerky strips at the ticket booth at the ferry. And they gave her on the way over to Seattle on Monday. And on the way back from Seattle yesterday, she got some. DJ BD just checked my two Fidelity accounts and they show zero dollars and a transfer on my tax form. All good. So at least yours is working out all right. All right. I haven't dove into mine yet. I haven't. I maybe next weekend I'll do my taxes and figure all that crap out. Couple of salty boys in the chat. <laughs> Found a five leaf clover once. Well, there you go. I've never found a five leaf clover. I, I didn't learn. I, maybe I did in the past. I just didn't recognize it as being special. I thought one of the four leaf ones were special. Uh, but then later people were like, no, eight leaf clover. Is, like you guess the more leaves you find on a clover, the more special it is. I didn't learn that till too late in life when I was no longer having lunch at soccer camp in the grass. <laughs> 